Hi everybody, welcome to our service for Ash Wednesday. Normally Ash Wednesday being the start of Lent is a very penitential service where we call to mind all those things that we have done wrong and wish to do better. Lent itself is a penitential season. However, I don't know about you, but this whole year just past feels like it has been extremely penitential, where we have cut out many of the things in our lives that we would enjoy doing. And while we are blessed that most of us are okay during this time, we have had to stay at home. We've not seen our friends and families and we have not been able to go anywhere. Therefore, this Ash Wednesday service, I wanted to acknowledge that. And while it is a service of penitence, I didn't want to go overboard on that. While during Lent we often give up things, I'd rather encourage us to take something up that's positive, because to deny ourselves of more things is going to be even more difficult this year. It also seems hard to believe that our Ash Wednesday service last year took place in Snaith Priory when it was a hive of activity with people assisting in the ongoing flooding situation that began on Shrove Tuesday last year. So being at home now as I do this service for you, I do encourage us to draw to mind all that has happened this year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to an observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. And the Collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came down to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, it commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They said this to test him and so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you without sin cast the first stone. And once again 
he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way for now and do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, may I speak in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have to say that is one of my favourite passages um, in the Bible. It's truly shocking that we should even think uh, that somebody who had sinned should be stoned to death. Of course, the reality is that in some places in our world, that is still something that could happen. But what we see in that story is Jesus is reminding us that basically we should not judge because actually we need to look at ourselves first and be sure that we not have not done anything wrong. As of course, as humans, we all have done things wrong and therefore we should not be people that then judge. Of course, during lockdown, um, when we have had very little to do, it is easy to fall into that uh, process of judging. I know I've done that myself. I might look at somebody and say, hang on, why are they out? What, what, what reason have they got to be out? Or um, I may be looking at something else and just thinking, why have they got people round at their house? Have they got a right to have somebody round at their house? We've, we've all fallen in that trap because we have very little to think about. But during this Lent, perhaps it is time to step away from being people who are judgmental, to catch ourselves when we do that and to stop ourselves from doing it. For my birthday, um, Diane bought me uh, this great theological tome of work, The Wisdom of Call the Midwife. Diane knows me so well that this is just right up my street. And there is a brilliant quote in here from Sister Monica Joan. And for those of you who don't watch Call the Midwife, Sister Monica Joan is the elderly nun who many think has uh, lost her marbles a little bit and don't necessarily take her seriously. But once in a while, she comes out with great wisdom. And this was one of her wisdom uh, pieces. She said, the hands of almighty God are so often to be found at the end of one's arms. And that speaks really profoundly to me. Because actually, rather than being people who judge, we can be people who find the work of God at the end of our own arms. We can do things to help and encourage people. And so during this Lent, I encourage us to think about how we ourselves can help others how rather than perhaps judging people because of the fact we haven't got a lot to be doing, we need to be thinking about how we can see people around us and how we can help them and find God at the end of our own arms. In a few moments where I would ordinarily do the litany of penitence, what I'm going to do instead is read some words from Pope Francis. Pope Francis is encouraging us this year to take things up, not to give things up. And so I share these words with you and encourage you to do the same. Amen. The words of Pope Francis. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger 
and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness. Fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words. Be silent and listen. In our Ash Wednesday service, <clears throat> we would usually uh, do the imposition of ashes where we would uh, have burnt the previous year's palm crosses and made them up to place um, ashings on people's heads to remind them that they are but to dust and that they will return to dust. We can't do that this year, but what we can do is on our own heads draw a symbolic sign of the cross. And so as I say these words, I encourage you to put that symbolic cross on your head as we endeavour to follow those wonderful words of Pope Francis. Dear friends, I invite you to receive the symbolic sign of the cross on your forehead, a sign of the spirit of penitence, which we shall keep this season of Lent. God, our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that this symbol on our forehead this year will be a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality for it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. God our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in this very strange Lent, we ask you to help us take to heart this idea of not denying ourselves physical things as we are already doing that, but denying ourselves some of the thoughts that become so easy to fall into when we have less to do. Help us not to judge one another. Help us to walk in the shoes of others and to understand where they are coming from. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all people who are troubled at this time. Those who do not have enough money to feed their families those who are struggling at home, trying to homeschool. And for all those who are finding this time very difficult on their mental health. Be with them, Lord, and envelop them in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And we remember all those people who were still living with the after effects of last year's flooding. Help us to be aware of those in need and help us to find ways that we will assist them to get their lives more normally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this Lent, we give thanks for all the wonderful things that we are privileged to have in this country. Particularly, we give thanks for our NHS and our frontline service workers. We pray that you will keep them safe in this time. And we give thanks for the rollout of the vaccine programme. Praying that this will be done fairly across our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you to join with me now in the words of the Lord's Prayer said in its traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this Lent and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>